G'day guys and welcome to me lab. Now in this, our 12th lesson on our uh, ARPG Zero to Zelda course, we are going to be adding collectibles. In particular, we're going to make a collectible to put in our cave, just like that first um, cave of Zelda, where we can go and grab something that's going to help us on our adventure. Now in this particular setting, I think a flaming stick to scare away the magpies is in order. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a new scene. We're going to create our sprite, put all that in there um, and then we've got a bunch of uh, scripting things we need to edit to make it all work for us so let's uh, have a look at what today uh, has in store for us now if you've been following along your game should look something like this you got your character they can go into the cave they can see the new uh, player character we put in there they can exit the cave and then also we've got the ability to go and, and fight our magpies and also uh, die from fighting our so a quick recap, we have created our project in our time out, we created our player and enemy, we gave them movement and animations, we created our, our layers and collision shapes so that all these things can interact with each other. Um, we set up our combat system that has an attack, it also has death and things like that. Um, and we've created a new scene to transition to as well as a friendly NPC to throw in there. So that's where we're up to now. Today we're gonna add in our collectible that's just gonna give a bit more uh, interest to the entire game. So what specifically we're going to achieve? Well, we're going to create a collectible called the Flame and Stick, uh, and we're going to use that to scare off our magpies. Why? Well, to make our game more interesting, we want to introduce some more complex ideas to make the gameplay a bit more intriguing. You are going to need to be able to understand and apply how to create nodes, how to create and edit scripts, and also to set up things like collision shapes and area 2Ds, things like that. And your success today is going to look like you being able to go, get the Flame and Stick off of mum, leave the cave, and then magpies pies avoid you instead of coming towards you to attack all right so let's get stuck into it so the first thing we're going to do is create our scene for our stick um, and that's going to be based on just a um, an area 2d node so we can create an area 2d we're going to give it the name of stick super creative I know it's now going to need a collision shape and it's also going to need an animated sprite 2d all right, now our collision shape, we can sort that out super fast, right? We should all be really familiar with that now. Let's use a capsule, for example. Then our animated Sprite 2D, we click on it. We click on animation. We click on Frights Brains where it says empty. We click on new Sprite Frame, and then we click on Sprite Frames, and that brings us into here. <sighs> okay, cool. So we've got our normal sort of animation set up down here. This one is going to be a four frame animation. I want it to play twice a second, so we're going to go eight frames a second. We're going to set the auto load to... Um, play and then we've got to find our sprites now if you are um, following along and you have been all the way you'll either be able to find these sprites like down below or you'll be able to grab them from um, itch.io or the github links as well if you're uh, doing this not at skill and we're going to use this flaming stick png so we've just added it in here it is here flaming stick png that's going to be what we're going to use so we click on our grid click on flame and stick open it up it's only going to have one vertical and four horizontal select them add four frames there they are let's have a quick look at it play gonna have to zoom right in here methinks go oh, I'm reasonably happy with that took five minutes looks good enough excellent so let's save that we're gonna save it as stick dot scene we are going to actually make this collision shape a bit smaller too and the next thing we need to do is actually drag this into our uh, our cave scene so let's say that let's go to our cave in the 2d we just remember how you do it you just grab it and drag it in from the file menu basically there's our stick um, in the cave excellent so we are getting there the next step is going to be we need to do some code but why don't we just give this a quick test first to make sure that everything looks okay so test it let's go into our scene there it is there you can see it we can just walk over everything in here still because we haven't made any changes but you can see there is our stick and it's got its animation going excellent okay so let's exit out of there don't need to mess with that anymore the next step though is we're going to start messing with some script all right so script time we need to do one for our stick we also need to add in a few variables and things like that so let's start with our stick script so we're going to do that by clicking on our stick scene we're going to click on our sticks root node 
and then we're going to click on the little um, add script thing and click create and that's going to extend from area 2d so remember whenever we create a script um, and we're attaching it to a node it's going to extend that node and our script node was an area 2d so that's why it extends area 2d now what are we going to do well we actually want to signal our area 2d to this script so if we click on our stick over there, we click on our node over there, and then we find our body entered, just like we've used for a few of the others. Double click on that, send it in. That then creates that little signal. There's the little green thing. Now, what we want to do here is instead of just passing, we want to add in a little bit of code. So just like we did with our um, hitboxes and all that sort of stuff, we're going to do this if a body, gosh, it helps if I can type, doesn't it? Is in group, and it's going to be player colon at the end what do we want to do well we want to say body dot has stick equals true we want to change this uh, variable we're going to add to our player called has stick to being true and then we want to set our um, stick to be um, invisible so basically saying we've picked it up, we flagged our player to change something, we then hide the stick. Make sense? So that's all we want to do there. Let's next go into our player script, go up to the top where we've got all of those juicy variables and we're going to add another one. Oops. And it was called has stick and it's obviously going to be false when we start out. So let's save that um, and let's give it a test. So open it up into our cave there is our stick now ideally when we walk over it it should disappear and it does how's that but there is a problem and i will show you if we exit and go back in our stick has reappeared but we've already collected it we don't want to do this infinitely right but the thing is with godot whenever you change scenes you're sort of creating a new instance of the player and all that and you lose any sort of variables that you've been messing around with and this is true for a lot of different things. So in our last lesson, you might remember when we did our cave and we transitioned in and out of it, I deliberately put that right next to my start position so I didn't have to mess around with this uh, the variable of where our player will be when the player emerges from the cave. But if you put your cave somewhere else, you would have noticed when you exited the cave, your player still started in its normal start position. We can deal with this in a global script. We're not going to do it today, the cave part of it, because it, it's a bit more involved and I don't want to go too deep in these um, individual ones. But what I might do is in a couple more lessons when we've done all of the basics, we might do a few quick shoots on how would I change where my player emerges from the cave and a few other things like that that might be a bit more interesting, like adding um, hearts in like a GUI layer like you would actually get in Zelda and all those sorts of things. So we'll do a bunch of extra things like that after we've got through all the basics all right so for now though this is an issue and we need to introduce our global script so let's exit out of um, this and let's actually get started on it so we're in our scripts the way we're going to add our global script is by coming up to file clicking on new script and calling it global that wasn't too hard was it and then all we want to add in here is actually that var has stick <laughs> oh gosh has stick equals false Right, the same variable we put into our player script. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go into my player script and I'm going to remove it from there as well. Okay, save that again. Um, now we need to change what our uh, stick script does because that's actually looking for our player to have the variable. So we need to change it. Before we change the stick script, we need to make it so that the global variable we just made is actually global. Simply calling the file global doesn't make it global. We actually need to do a little bit of tinkering. So if we come up to our project uh, menu option and then project settings, and then we go to auto load, we can come across here where we've got set path or press add to create a script. Well, we're gonna just go to our script, which is gonna be um, this global.gd, and we're gonna open that. Now, for some reason, my computer's running a bit slow when I do this, but that's all right. So this global script is, and, and what we're doing here is we're going to make it so that we automatically load this global script wherever we are. That's going to then mean that we're able to store information in our global script that doesn't get lost between our scene transitions. So things like have we picked up the stick or not, or other things like um, where is our start position when we exit the cave transition only so there's little things like that that we'll be able to do that we can all control through the global script so we don't lose that information between scene transitions and things like that so we need to open this up um, once that opens up we can then um, 
add it to our sort of um, auto load list and then move on from there. So I'm not sure why my computer is complete. Oh, there we go. So we're moving on now. So there we go. So we just want to click this add button over here. Um, I'm going to click on add. I'm going to end this snippet here because I've got no idea how long this is going to go. I've got no computer. What can I say? Um, once that is added, we're then going to close down the bottom and then go back into our uh, stick script to make a few changes. So once you've got that added, close it and let's go into the stick script. All right, so I finally dealt with my spinning pinwheel of death. Um, we've set up that global script, we've closed that, I'm back in our stick script. So we need to make a couple of little changes. The first one is gonna be just here. We're gonna change it from body.hasstick because no longer will our player have it, right? We're gonna change it to global.hasstick. So we need to make sure that our player doesn't have that uh, variable anymore um, and now it is a global variable that we've put in there but this still isn't enough right the the stick will still reappear because we're not doing anything in our cave scene to actually check on it so if we now go up to our cave um, script and we go to our ready function instead of passing we're going to add in a little bit of code all right so we're going to add in this if global dot has stick then stick.qfree. So we're gonna say anytime we load our cave transition, if our global has stick variable is true, which is only gonna be the case if we've already picked up the stick, then as soon as we load that, load that cave transition, we want the, the stick to disappear. We want it to delete itself out of the scene so we never get to see it. So hopefully if we save this and we click on play, we should get that happening. So play. We go in, there is our stick. We need to collect it for the first time. That should now have changed our global variable to be uh, true. We're gonna exit our cave. Now let's go back in. And as you can see, the stick is gone still. So that's perfect, we've got there. But the thing that we haven't changed yet is the whole stick doing anything, right? So if we go out and go towards a magpie, that magpie is not gonna fly away from us. It's gonna come at us. It's gonna start attacking us upside down. We can still tweak those and kill us eventually. So, and then we queue free. So let's close down that and let's have a look at our magpie script now. All right, so find your way to your magpie script and then find this on territory body entered. So this is when we normally make it so that our magpie detects our player and then starts flying towards the player and attacking them. But our variable, well, the, the stick that we created, the flame and stick, we want that to, whenever our player has it, so whenever the global has stick variable equals true, we want that to influence what our magpie does. So we need to change our magpie script as well. And it's this section here that we're gonna do it to. So normally we'd go, if um, body is in group player, player equals body sweep equals true. Well, we actually wanna make a little bit of a change to that, and I'll show you what I mean. So if body is in group player, actually, I think we still need the player equals body bit. I think that's more what we want. So if global dot has stick, um, then we want to set our swoop to false, otherwise set our swoop to true. So it's just a simple if else, right? A really basic logic question. We could add in things like, oh, the magpie flies away faster or there's a different animation or whatever, but I'm just trying to keep it simple. So as our code stands now, if we save that, we should be able to run it, go in, get our stick, the stick will disappear, we leave the cave, we can go back into the cave, the stick still won't be there, come back out, go and find a magpie, and the magpie should fly away from us. Now it's still possible with this logic that when it picks a new direction, the direction it'll pick is towards us and it might accidentally come towards us. These are things we can deal with later on. So let's just test this and see if it works. So we can go in, we can get our stick, we can leave. Let's make sure it's still not there, it isn't. Now let's go and see if any magpies wanna actually say hello. Must be some up here. There's one. Hello, magpie. Oh, it, it thought about it. It doesn't want to attack us. Look at that. So there we go. Just with a few little tweaks like that, we've made it so that we can collect a collectible and it's going to influence other aspects of the game by using that global script. And that was it for today. Fantastic, guys. So let's do our must may my and all that stuff. And I will leave you to keep making your amazing game. So our must may might for this lesson, where you've got to create that collectible scene, edit the scripts and all of that so that it all works well. What you may like to do, well, you may like to consider how would you make another collectible that would give our players some health back?
have a think about what you would need to do differently to do that. And what you might like to do is, well, maybe think about making a player look different when it has the collectible. So there are things we can do like the modulate and stuff like that. So those are things I'm just putting out there for you to have a look at. We haven't actually taught how those would work, but you've got bits of information that you might be able to piece together to make it work. And remember, you can always check the documentation online as well. So today, if you were successful, you made a collectible item our player can pick up and use it to scare away our enemies with. Next time, well, we're gonna make a sort of a death scene or a death sequence. So um, when you lose at Zelda, it comes up with that black screen saying save and exit, continue, etc. So we're gonna do something similar to that in our next uh, lesson. And the quote I would like to leave you with this week is from Epictetus, one of my favorites. Um, he who laughs at himself never runs out of things to laugh at. I'll see you next time.